hi hello i am back again with another reaction video and this one is the final four hours of king von this one has been requested a lot so apologies if you asked ages ago i've just got so many videos that you know have been suggested but yes the final 48 hours of king von let me know oh my leg keeps getting burned by this heat up okay I've got shorts on, so it's just not, this is going straight on my skin. But yeah, before we jump into this, make sure you jump over to my Instagram and follow me over there. Message me, follow me, so you're kept in a loop, so you know when I'm dropping new reaction videos and all of that good stuff. A huge thank you for the love, the support forever. Happy and grateful, so thank you for that. Let me know some things in the comments as well that you'd like me to react to. All that good stuff, but yes, enough of the yappity yap yap yapping. The final 48 hours of King Von. Thank you for watching and I'm going to jump straight into it. On November 6, 2020, King Von would be one of five people shot outside Monaco Hookah Lounge in Atlanta. Shots fired at a uh, in Monaco. Around 3.20 a.m., two groups of men began arguing outside, leading to gunfire. Two off-duty police officers were working security at the establishment that night and they too engaged in the shootout. Because of this, a full investigation was conducted to see whether or not the Atlanta Police Department was involved in his death. Mm. Here's what they found retracing his steps for those last 48 hours. Vaughn, look, I break down the wall, stuck with Pat, dropping your phone. On November 4, 2020, King Vaughn was in Atlanta, Georgia. He was celebrating the release of his Welcome to Oblock album that dropped just a few days prior. Okay. His career was peaking, and every day his music was being discovered by a new audience. There's no question he was about to be a superstar, but the biggest issue Vaughn faced at that time was himself. See, King Vaughn was from the infamous housing projects of Parkway Gardens on the south side of Chicago. Before ever stepping into a booth, he was already very active in the street life. He only decided to rap after beating a murder case in 2017. His reputation only made his music more real for listeners, leading to his blow up just one year after that. But it's important to realize when someone lives a life the way Vaughn did before fame, it can be hard to leave that mentality behind, even after finding a way out through music. Because of this, Vaughn had no issue when it came to things like beefing with other rappers. While in Atlanta, an ongoing issue between King Vaughn and rapper NBA Youngboy had been brewing for months. On November mm -hmm, 4th, I DJ like Academics that. would invite Vaughn onto his podcast to publicly speak about their issues. During the conversation, Vaughn assured his fans that there was no real problem, and it was the internet just trying to make it more than what it was. Unknowing at the time that in under 48 hours, this would all come to an end. Ain't no rap beef, and it ain't no real beef unless somebody got shot or something. Or unless you know what, somebody... People told me, people told me you and Young Boy was beefing or something like that. that said something about, that Yo, what happened? Von, what's going on with you, man? They be saying that a lot. It's like we got the same issues and, and holes. And then, you know how the internet are trying to make it. Don't tell me I got problems over girls. No, it's the internet, gang. It's the, it's the you know? They try to make it like that because it's the internet and it holds it. And then, you know how the internet try to make it. Don't tell me I got problems over girls. No, it's the internet, gang. It's the, it's the you know, they try to make it like that because it's the internet. You know? These issues have been escalating since a few months before when pictures of King Von and NBA Youngboy's ex girlfriend mm, surfaced online. I remember that. From that point forward, the two rappers made it known they didn't like each other through a series of social media posts. With two artists this large going back and forth, it was only a matter of time before others got involved as well. One of those people would be Quando Rondo, an artist and friend of NBA Youngboy. Even though Vaughn and Quando were cool at one point, now they weren't. And it just so happens Quando's from Savannah, Georgia, only a four hour drive from Atlanta. I'm saying though, 63rd, dirty ass, I'm talking about you, man. I'm talking about on November 5th, King Vaughn woke up and gathered his entourage. This included himself, his manager, and 20-some others. Around 11 p.m., just five hours before his passing, they headed out to Opium Nightclub. Vaughn was set to make an appearance and promote his new project. He hopped into his bulletproof Hellcat, followed by eight other cars filled with friends and associates. Around midnight, they arrived. By this time, his manager was taking notice that something was off with Vaughn that night. He couldn't put his finger on it, but he felt like he wasn't himself, almost like he knew. They stayed at Opium for a few hours where everyone appeared to be enjoying themselves. Fans would upload videos online of Vaughn in the club, and from the looks of it, everything seemed normal. But these would be the last videos of King Vaughn smiling we would see. Hey, 
know it's all love when it's up shit. I, I done dropped that on that one with the whole black going crazy. I don't want to think about it, you know. Around 2 a.m., just two hours before his time of death, he gathered his crew and they left the venue. According to his manager, everybody thought they were headed back to the Airbnb, but somewhere on their way home, they lost track of Vaughn's car. After realizing they lost him, they began calling his phone to see where he went, as it was very unlike him to leave without saying anything. So, already confusions were already starting, because normally, if we got an after party or we got anything we're going to, we know as a team. Everybody know to be on point. You know what I'm saying? We're traveling with a real deal. Thanks for a real step. So everybody gonna know how to move. But from that night, I don't know what it was. Maybe it's got timing. I don't know what it was, but Vaughn completely went on his own course. His manager and more importantly, his security went with him everywhere. After calling, they found out he rerouted to an after hours hookah lounge across town. Okay. A little before 3 a.m., Vaughn pulled up to Monaco, but decided to wait in his car while the rest of his entourage was still on their way. About 15 minutes went by, Vaughn still in his bulletproof vehicle staying warm. His manager, followed by six other cars, pulled up to the parking lot. He hopped in the car with Vaughn, and once again, he said he felt like he wasn't himself. They stayed in there while the rest of his entourage was wondering what was going on. It was a cold night, so they too decided to wait in their cars. After a few minutes of talking, his manager convinced Vaughn it was time to go inside. He let his security team know he was ready to enter, so they did their normal checkup. Around 3.15 a.m., security went into the club and checked it out to make sure it was clear of any threats. With Vaughn being a high-profile rapper, this was a standard procedure for them before okay. entering any venue. They couldn't bring weapons in the club, so security left them in their cars. Right as they were about to walk in, one of Vaughn's friends alerted him that Quando Rondo was in a car just a few feet away. It's unknown if Vaughn got a tip from someone that night about Quando being at the club. Or if it was just a coincidence that he rerouted his car to the exact location they would both be at. Mm. It's possible it just happened like that. But this could have also been the reason Vaughn seemed off. Maybe he knew something no one else did. Maybe, yeah. Normally Vaughn was calm, collective, and soft-spoken. Living the life he lived back in Chicago, he knew how to handle these situations. But on this night, Vaughn reacted before anyone could say or do anything. He immediately hopped out of his vehicle, jewelry on and all, not knowing if Quando was alone or if he too had people with him. Only a few moments later, the two would come face to face, and just like Vaughn spoke about before, it was on sight. He threw punches at Quando even before words could be exchanged. Others rushed over as the fight broke out. What Vaughn didn't know was the white vehicle Quando was standing next to had people from his crew inside. At 3.20 a.m., only a few seconds after the fight had started, a gunshot from only a few feet away went off, striking Vaughn in his side and catching him completely off guard. You can see the gunman, who we now know as Lil' Tim, coming out from behind the car and firing multiple shots. Oh, yeah, yeah, I Vaughn got see. hit three to four times, and his manager was also hit in the leg. The two off-duty police officers working security that night reacted immediately, and they too fired shots into the crowd. But we can confirm now the shots that injured Vaughn came from Quando's side, and not the police officers. The police would hit three people in total, one of them being Lil' Tim. Vaughn laid in the street holding on to Quando until Muop, one of Vaughn's good friends, broke up the fight. At 3.23 a.m., there were injuries on both sides. Instead of waiting for ambulances, their crews drugged their wounded into cars and sped off to the emergency room. Jeez. According to those in the vehicle with Vaughn, he was still conscious throughout the ride, even telling one of his friends to calm down that he was going to be okay. Around 3.32 a.m., just moments apart from each other, both crews would arrive at Grady Hospital, which was less than 10 minutes away. Quano would start a live stream of himself, helping Lil Tim inside the building to try and protect himself. Live stream? This is what I'm saying. People be live streaming. People be doing Instagram lives. People be... Do you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just... I don't know. People be live streaming everything, like... Once apart from each other, both crews would arrive at Grady Hospital, which was less than 10 minutes away. Quano would start a live stream of himself helping Lil Tim inside the building to try and protect himself in case Vaughn's people ran up on him. Come on, come on, come on, he's shot! Come on, come on, bit boy, you got the up. Come on, cuz, just keep breathing, bit boy. Just keep breathing, cuz. But this wouldn't happen, and nobody else was hurt after the initial conflict at the lounge. Unfortunately, though, just after 4 a.m., 
King Vaughn, along with two others who were shot that night, would pass away to their wounds, taking his life and career far too soon. Lo Tim was arrested in Grady Hospital, where he was treated for his wounds before being taken into custody. He posted bail the same day and has since been awaiting trial for the murder of King Vaughn. Everybody got found and somebody relates to him or somebody cool him. You kill him. Crazy. Like everybody that, that he was close with is trying to kill you. It, it's a never end. Or they gonna kill. Let's kill somebody close to him. It, it don't yeah. stop. To everybody, all the people that are playing the game. Yeah, it doesn't don't, stop. You know what I'm it's the last man standing. It's either you gonna be in jail, you gonna die. Like he said, it just doesn't On stop. On November sixth. Oh, like he literally just said, it doesn't seem like it stops. Like the ending, how he's saying like. You're either gonna end up in jail or you're gonna end up not here, like not alive. Like, you know, it's just sad. Like, it is. It's just, I always say it's just like a cycle that just seems to keep going. But this was an informative video because I've not, like, obviously I heard that he passed and, you know, but I've never actually sat and watched a video like this. So, this was definitely a very informative video. So, thank you for requesting it. Like, it's, you know, it's just sad. It's a cycle. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And I will see you in the next video very, very soon. Bye.